You know what I was thinking? Girlfriends. You know what's funny? When I was younger, I would never get in a relationship. I was pretty much single my whole life. Honestly, up until about two years ago, I'd only been with a girl for about two months. Why am I telling you guys this? Because I find it funny how gamers almost imagine that they're not going to ever find someone. Now, here's the thing. When you're a gamer, and obviously if you're any much of a, anywhere near as crazy of a gamer as I am, you obsess about the games you play. It's an obsession, it's an addiction, it's something to look forward to, it's motivating, it's exciting, it's mysterious. Gaming is so much to me. Now, I'm not going to say I'm a hermit. I wasn't always an indoor person. When I was younger, I used to skateboard, snowboard every week, bike ride, play in the woods. I'd always used to, like, pretend I was a superhero character and go in the woods and pretend I was fighting, like, a monster and stuff. Like, let's face it, I, don't, I didn't always need electronic entertainment in order to keep myself, I guess, intelligent, keep my brain flowing, keep my imagination going. I also used to play with Legos, and believe it or not, at one point in my life, I did used to read books. Now, the reason I'm making this episode is because I was just thinking about how it's funny because my girlfriend in particular doesn't play video games. If anything, she hates it. She almost hates gaming like I hate, I don't know, reading books or going to the library or something. Like, I just don't... I, I don't know, I guess I don't under, really understand why people these days don't like video games. Now, when you're growing up as a gamer, at least in a fantasy oriented thought process you'd want to almost get a gamer chick a girl that plays video games as much or almost as much as you do so you could share the hobby now at the same time i love to talk to my friends on xbox live or you know maybe in the upcoming future i'll have some on the playstation network but it's fun for me you put on the headset you talk to your friends and you're pretty much done now i don't mean to sound like a jerk but it's easier that way because then when you're done talking to them, you can end the chat. You can just go back to playing by yourself. I was always an independent person, so I never really relied on friends to, I guess, keep myself going. In college, I did go to parties. I did go out and stuff. So I had the whole spiel of college. I didn't just sit in my room all day. I actually did know this kid uh, named Cameron that used to sit in his room all the time, and he never went anywhere. We'd ask him to go places, and he would always just be sitting in his room either playing uh, some Halo rendition, Assassin's Creed, or watching The Walking Dead which he's got good taste, but he never left his room. A lot of people that don't get in relationships are often uh, socially awkward or you know weird in, in crowds. I guess I have some social anxiety myself, but it's not so bad to the point where it keeps me from going out in public. Um, it's definitely difficult because when I'm away from my games, and I'm sure a lot of you gamers could think the same, the same way, unless I'm just crazy. When I'm not around my games, I almost feel like I started a project and then let's say I'm going on like a business trip or a vacation. It's like all you're thinking about is finishing that project. Like let's say someone's building a deck or someone's writing a song or someone's drawing a picture and you take it, you get really into it and then you put it down and then you go to your girlfriend's house for a weekend or a couple of days and it's like the whole time all you're thinking about is that freaking project or that picture or that deck. So the thing with me is I usually go to my girlfriend's house on weekends. Um, on weekdays, I go to work, and luckily she lives like five minutes from my job. So on weekends, I'll usually just go to her place. And even on weekdays, like some weeks, some entire weeks, I'll go to her place Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, because I usually work on Wednesdays. Uh, it's my second job. And then on weekends, I see her too. So the only time I really have to myself to play video games is like tonight being Thursday. And like, that's not enough for me. Like, I love playing games. I could play them 8 to 12 hours plus a day, and it never gets old. That's what's great about gaming. It's not a hobby that loses its charm over time. A new game is like a new experience. So my suggestion to you guys, and this is kind of the main core of why I made this episode, is to tell you guys how I overcome this type of situation and some new things that I've been trying to I guess, do to help me get over that, like, I guess, uh, game withdrawal, if you will. Um, the bottom line is this. It, if you finish a game, then there's nothing left to do in it unless there's multiplayer. Why do we finish games? We play games through to finish them. But then when they're done, it's like, now we're bored. What's the point? Earning achievements or having bragging rights for beating games on hard? There's really not much content ever these days. Mostly it's DLC, if anything, post-game content. Back in the day of N64, we used to have unlockable maps or characters, 
le you know, levels, things like that from beating games on hard. GoldenEye was one of them. That always sticks in my mind when I think of in-game content. So what's the point of finishing games? What's the point of rushing through them? I don't know. I personally, I don't look at gaming like a job, but it's definitely more than just a hobby. It's definitely a bit of an obsession, or that's to say the least. Now, growing up, I always wanted a gamer chick. It always seemed like a great idea. And then once you start to understand what a gamer chick means, then I kind of didn't want one anymore. It's someone that plays games way too damn much, someone that usually doesn't have that many manners, at least the ones I met, and people and girls that also are tomboys, people that hang out with guys too much. Can't always be trusted when girls have too many guy friends. Not trying to be weird or sexist here, but it does seem like it's that way. Sometimes it's better to have a girly girl that she just hangs out with her girlfriends and does their own thing. Sometimes it's better to have a girl that just stays out of your way and leaves your hobby alone so you can enjoy it yourself. But this is the main suggestion that I would say to get around that. Invest in a handheld gaming console. Nintendo's 3DS has been doing amazing this year, in the year 2013. You couldn't get a better handheld console. Fuck the 2DS, it's stupid. I don't understand the point of it. If you're on a budget and you have to maybe suffer through not having 3D, go with the 2DS. It functions the same. Plays 3DS games just as good, essentially. I have a Vita and a 3DS, specifically. I've actually always invested in handheld consoles, but as a kid, I've always had way more time to play them, whether it be uh, going on a vacation or just sitting in the back seat. I mean, these days, I don't really ever go in a car with my parents, so I don't really have much use for it. But gaming is something that doesn't always have to be done by yourself in a living room. Invest in a handheld gaming console. You could bring it to your girlfriends. It'll give you something to look forward to, or guy friends. I don't mean to, uh, I guess, exclude my possible female subscribers here. If you're going to your significant other's place, bring your handheld console. It'll give you something to look forward to, just as if you're home and you're about to play a home console. Um, I'm actually heading to my uh, girlfriend's this weekend, and I'm thinking of picking up A Link Between Worlds and a 3DS. It's giving me that excitement to go over there, that excitement that I don't particularly have. And I, I'm not, I guess, happy about this. Like, it's kind of guilty. It makes me guilty to even say this. But a lot of times I get more excited to get a new video game than I would to, like, go on a date. Like, it's just the way I am. Like, I get really excited over buying things or getting a new game. It's just the way I was uh, brought up. Like, I always grew up playing games, and that was the core of my, my life. And even though I had a lot of other extracurricular activities, it was always the main thing I've always had. So if you guys actually suffer through some of the same, uh, I guess, mental tendencies that I have when it comes to gaming, don't fret. It doesn't mean you can't have a good relationship. You just need to know how to work around it. Don't let your hobby drown you out of a good time. But utilize it in such a way so that you can make good use of it. Make sure that, you know, you spend time with your significant other and even your family. But who's to say gaming has to go away? Just because you get older doesn't mean you have to stop playing games. You just need to figure out a way to make it work for you.